Hello and welcome to another episode of Historical Churches, where in this episode we will be visiting St. Helen's Church, Ashby de la Zouche, Leicestershire. St. Helen's Church mainly dates from the 15th century, when the church was rebuilt by William Hastings. The Doomsday Book of 1086 records that Ashby de la Zouche had a priest and was part of the lands held by Hugh de Gransmysnel. Though there is no mention of a church, we know that the church we see today was built on an early one, dating from the 11th century, so it is probable that the building of the original church began soon after. In 1086, the town was simply known as Ashby, and didn't become Ashby de la Zouche until the La Zouche family took control of the land during the reign of Henry III. Later alterations to the church were made between 1878 and 1880, adding the two outer aisles which gives the church a square appearance that we see today. Inside the church is impressive and has many things to see. Though it is dimly lit, its elegance is strikingly clear. There is two fonts, the original, which is uncertain in age, and the Victorian one, which replaced the original in 1880. Also there are fine monuments like the late 15th century pilgrim and the beautiful stained glass windows which depict the life of Jesus and contain ancient pieces of glass. The church houses many memorials like this alabaster tomb slab which was removed from the floor in 1880. It depicts a local tailor called Robert Nundi. The pulpit is Victorian in age, and the Lady Chapel has 17th century panelling, which came from nearby Stoughton Harold Hall. The most impressive of memorials is the Hastings tomb to Francis, second Earl of Huntingdon, and his wife Catherine Pohl who was a direct descendant of Richard III. This tomb was once painted, as is still partly visible, and has elegantly captured their effigies and those of their children, the boys on one side, the girls on the other. Also in the Hastings Chapel is the memorial to Selina Huntingdon, who died in 1791. There are many other memorials to be seen on the walls, as well as a finger pillory, and it's easy to spend a lot of time inside. The graveyard may look empty at first glance, though that is due to nearly all of the headstones being flat, save these being leaned up against the outer wall. The grounds are well kept and it is easy to walk around. 
There are many graves, though many of the headstones are worn so that the details are difficult to see, though there are still a lot that are readable. While exploring, you'll see some eye-catching graves that are fascinating to look at. Most of the graves date from the 1800s, so if you're looking for ancestors in the area, St Helen's Church is worth a visit, or if you're visiting the castle next door. If you have enjoyed this episode, please do like and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time for more historical churches. Until then, goodbye.